Hey guys, this is uh, Jeff Gibby over at Metastack. I hope you're doing well uh, today. I want to say tonight, I know a lot of you are actually, uh, it's today for most of you. So I want to thank you for coming and joining us today. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start with uh, the class. Uh, we've got Rahul Mohindar, uh, a very special guest, uh, who's uh, going to be talking about trading Hong Kong and Singapore stocks. So uh, let's go ahead and get underway. I want to take a few minutes and introduce uh, uh, Rahul Mohindar. Uh, Rahul uh, uh, gave a, a, a fantastic talk last night on trading Australian stocks, and I'm sure he's going to do an absolutely fantastic job tonight as well. Uh, I want to talk just a little bit about Rahul. Uh, Rahul is uh, a partner uh, of Metastock. He's been uh, one of our dealers, our only dealer in India for as long as I've been part of the company, uh, and I think a few years longer. He'll have to tell you the exact count, but um, he he does quite a few things. Uh, a little bit later today, he's going to be actually on TV doing some market analysis. I think he said it was CNBC that he was doing. Um, the methods that he, uh, uh, the RMO method is actually the first method I started trading with it. And it's uh, it's a method that's absolutely proved the test of time. I still use it uh, to this day. So, um, and uh, he's just, a, uh, uh, the things I like about Rahul is he's very well spoken. He has a way to kind of simplify things. And I think you're really going to enjoy what you have to, uh, what he has to say tonight. So uh, let's go ahead and get you talking here, Rahul. How are you doing t today? Oh, thanks, Jeff. I'm doing great. What time is it in India? Well, it's great for me. It's just 9 a.m. here, bang <laughs> okay. opposite of you. <laughs> yeah, 9.30 p.m. for me. So in any case, uh, I just turned over the screen presentation. I can see your slides. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn the time over to you. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate uh, your having it all set up. Uh, friends, welcome to uh, this morning session and probably uh, afternoon for a lot of you folks. But today's session is uh, more to give you an outlook of how I personally use the RMO and the RMO ATM for the Asian markets. I'm primarily uh, very active with my own uh, funds in Asia. So this is something I really connect to very deeply, uh, having an exposure in Australian markets, Indian markets. Uh, and some of the Southeast Asian markets is uh, is fascinating because not all of these markets necessarily run up the same way or run down altogether. I mean, I was looking at, say, the Indian markets over the last four or five months had a nice rally up. But when I looked at Singapore and Hong Kong, I, I saw the big slide down. So it's, it's quite fascinating how dynamic this is as a continent uh, where we have uh, you know, not just a one-way track where all these markets are either rallying up or down. So there's quite a disconnect at times, if I could put it that way, which also increases the dynamics and increases the opportunities for you and me as traders and investors. Friends, uh, just before I start, uh, to give you a, a better background, uh, yes, we've been partnered with uh, with uh, Metastock for probably, I'm trying to guess the exact number, but definitely over two decades. It's definitely my go-to program, you know, the favorite thing that I'd like to use when I trade my own money. Uh, and honestly, in uh, all this uh, years of trading, I mean, I've been actively trading the market uh, 20 years plus, and uh, besides being a panelist for Bloomberg, CNBC, et cetera, et cetera, my main goal is to make money out of trading. I do not have an advisory service. I am not someone who's gonna try and sell you a coaching class because unfortunately I don't do that. But I think for people who use my add-on and the indicators, I definitely want to educate users and educate potential traders to make trading more organized, simple, and approachable because I think what happens is in today's markets there's a lot of complexity floating around a lot of complicated charts out there and I think I kind of think the opposite we want to keep it very easy very simple and uh, get rule based my main focus is let's not look for a black box or holy grail but let's in fact understand a few methodologies and thereby channelize our approach get rule based in that approach I'm really not asking you here to switch your brains off, if I could put it uh, candidly. It's very important 
that we get disciplined and rule based because we don't need to switch off the brain we need to switch off the emotion and the only way we can switch off the emotion is when we have a step-by-step -step process in our analysis so the hope is to give you an insight on how to use the inbuilt rmo system and also talk to you on uh, three or four of my favorite setups uh, when i trade the atm well, before I start, I also want to thank Metastock for having me here. It's definitely wonderful that uh, Metastock as a company takes the initiative of educating customers and educating uh, the trading audience. It's very important to learn because without the learning, there's not going to be that earning. So this is a very important part and uh, congratulations and kudos to Metastock for having this act perfectly right so great job on the education and once we finish today's webinar I'm also going to talk to you a little bit more in terms of more resources if you like the sphere that I'm going to be talking about which you can have access to great so uh, let's get on to start with the RMO system and I'm going to start with a bare bones chart up here notice over here on my chart I have a typically uptrending market usually you don't have a market that just goes straight line up we have a market that goes up, takes a little drop, goes up again, gets sideways. For example, look at the square, or the, sorry, the rectangle over there. We have a nice choppy patch. And uh, what we need to understand here is that there are always going to be opportunities of entry and re-entry. And at the same time, we need to have a system that tells us that primarily the trend is up. Don't mistake this to be a top we need to have that clarity that the trend is intact. The long-term primary trend is intact. And with this sense of clarity, we would be able to position our trades with more precision, with more accuracy, with more consideration of that longer-term trend. Now, why is this longer-term trend so important for us? Why is it that we should not sell for a small drop within this long-term uptrend. The reason is when you use something like the RMO, which is very simple, it detects that primary trend being above zero and below zero, it clearly marks positive and negative zones. So if the RMO is above zero, we are positive and bullish. If the RMO is below zero, we are negative. Now, but why is this? Let's rotate back to that core question. Why is this? so important that we trade in the direction of the long-term trend. I'm sure with practical experience, you recognize this reason. And the main reason for this is you wanna make sure that you don't get caught in the wrong direction. You want to also make sure that you're trading in the direction of the stronger force. This, for example, is a, a chart of OCBC, and you can look at this as a clear uptrend from mid-2017 all the way up till May 2018. You can see that nice uptrend, and everywhere, if you look up top, you have the RMO in bullish zone. So since the RMO is positive, you are continuously only focused on looking for buy opportunities, looking for buy arrows, and ignoring the red bars and the sell arrows. We're really focused on where to buy. So directionally, you are clear. And notice after May onwards, when we peaked out at that $14 mark, we have not seen buy arrows. We have seen the RMO negative instead, and your focus has been to go short the stock. So it's very important to have this clarity because of three reasons. A, if I'm trading in the direction of the long term or the RMO, it increases my odds of winning, right? The hit rate of my trades are automatically going to be 7 out of 10 or greater. Besides that, we're trading in the direction of the stronger force. We as traders and investors, when we buy or sell, we think impulsively. We think that the minute I've bought from the next minute onwards, it should keep going up. But unfortunately, that's not the way the market works as much as we'd like it to. But the idea is that this will help you in that impulsive reaction. Because if I'm trading in the stronger force direction, which is up, if the RMO is bullish, 
chances are when it goes up, it's going to go up with speed. Or likewise, if I'm selling the market and the RMO is in negative zone, it'll go down with speed. And most importantly, we have a focus on the big picture. When I say big picture, I mean long-term trend. Now, the reason this is important, a lot of times you may have started out with a trading decision, but you realize what you've really gotten into is a good long-term healthy trade, and you might want to carry that forward into an investment. You can even look at that. So trading in the direction of the big picture, in the direction of that strong force, in the direction where your odds of winning are greater is very essential because the minute you do that, you give yourself that confidence, you give yourself that impulse you're looking for, you give yourself that solid hit rate approximately of seven out of 10. So trading in the direction of the long-term trend is very important to us and trust me, it'll be very easy when you use the inbuilt RMO inside of Metastock. So just so that uh, we clear this out, if there's anyone new who's started out with Metastock, the RMO trade model that I'm talking about and showing you right now is included inside of Metastock. I will also later on discuss the ATM tools or the automated trend modules uh, add-on that I have. But as of now, I'm discussing the pre-built RMO template that Metastock has bundled in for you inside of Metastock. So how do you enter a new trade with the RMO? So let's say we have a situation. I'm just going to quickly run back to this chart of OCBC. You can look at this as, okay, we've got a nice uptrend in place 2017 to May 2018. And then we've got the last four or five months, which are a clean downtrend. The question I get is, okay, that's great. I, I've understood the longer term trend direction and that from mid-May onwards, uh, we've been negative. But where do I precisely place my buy or my sell decision? And how do I confirm, reconfirm, or add more weight to that decision? So that's the important part. So let's run into the entry slide. When you buy, we're going to be looking at three elements. And before we just go mechanically into these, I want you to understand what are these three elements really doing? Whenever we look at a trend, there's a short-term trend, a medium-term trend, and a long-term trend. So when we're looking at the short-term signal, and typically short-term, the next five to 10 bars, that's going to be represented and detected and stamped for you in the form of arrows. You would get blue by arrows, and red cell arrows, right? So that's doing the short term. The blue colored bars are the red colored bars. In other words, the color shading on the bar or candle itself is representative of the medium term trend. So the medium term trend is stamped with the color that you see on the bars. And finally, you have the RMO, the oscillator, and the RMO stands for Rahul Mohinder oscillator, which is the oscillator I've created which is the primary trend, which is my long-term trend, which is telling you the trend of 60 bars or greater, okay? So if I'm looking at a daily chart, it's three months or greater. If I'm looking at an hourly chart, typically about 10 odd days because most of our markets are open six hours a day uh, in Asia. But of course, that could change depending on which exchange you trade. But today I'm gonna to primarily take examples from Asian markets so that you and I can relate to it. Uh, we're going to look at some stocks from Hong Kong, from Singapore, and the odd ones from India as well, because these are all very robust, very liquid markets, which have tons of opportunity. And I'm just going to take some of the heavyweights so that we can have a direct connection to them. So when you buy, we're looking at buying at a point when the short term, medium term, and long term trends sink in together. In other words, when we have the buy arrow, when we have the blue bar, when we have that RMO above zero or in bullish mode, when all three sink in, that's really the sweet spot. You and I need to go in there and buy the equity. Similarly, if I were to go short or sell the market, it's the absolute reverse. We're going to be looking for the RMO being negative. We're going to be looking for red bars and red arrows. So remember, these are what I call the 3D buy or the 3D sell rules. The 3D buy, why three-dimensional buy? Because there are three elements, the short-term, medium-term, and long-term. The buy arrow, the blue bar, and the RMO being above zero. If these things are there with you, you've got the buy set up, right? 
and we're going to be buying above the high of that bar very important rule we always like to buy strength the simplest confirmation for strength is okay if you've identified a point where all these three things are sinking in we want to buy above the high of that bar similarly if you're trying to short the market you want to be selling below the low of that bar so let's dive in straight with some examples this is the uh, nifty 50 the most well-traded index uh, of india and probably amongst the top five traded indices in the world now if you look at the nifty 50 index we've had quite a run-up unlike singapore and hong kong we've had the last four or five months which has been very robust and positive now the point is, let's look at all the different four vertical lines that are plotted up on the chart. Let's start with the first solid vertical line in April. We got a blue colored bar. The buy arrow came in three bars behind it. And you got the armor that just trickled up from negative to positive. So the minute I have all three in sync and notice they don't happen together. The arrow came first because being the short term signal, often the arrow does come first. Later comes the blue colored bar and the RMO going into a positive zone. So you definitely want to look at buying this market the minute you have that first breakout, right? So let's go back here and remember that that's what we're looking for, the first blue, the first buy signal. Now, what about the three different dotted lines over here? The three other dotted vertical lines that I've plotted, one in June, one in July, one in August, look at all three of them. They all have blue colored bars. They all have the buy arrow and they all have the RMO, which is above zero. And how am I looking at the RMO being above zero or bullish? Simply look at the histogram on top, or you can even look at the X axis at the bottom. We've got a little ribbon which marks out if the RMO is in bullish zone or bearish zone. So whichever way you like to look at it. You like to look at it up or you like to look at it down at the strip. But if I consider this second buy, which is in June, and the third buy, which is in July, and the fourth buy, which is in August, they do work out. But the question is, what are you really looking for? What are you and me as traders looking for? We're really looking for that first breakout. We're really looking for that April breakout when it was 10,000 before it went to 11,500. So it's important we focus on getting the first breakout. In other words, the second buy and the third buy and the fourth buy should be of lower weightage and lower quantity. I need you to look for the most meaty, the most fruitful, the most potential signals. And that is going to be the first signal. And let me help you define that. The first signal is the first time when red bars go to blow. The first time when the armor turns up from a negative to a positive zone. I need that first time, the first breakout is what's important. We need to get our act right because sometimes you see the second breakout is not that fine. I mean, the third one was quite okay, but honestly, the second one was just going up and down, up and down. It was quite a painful process to hold. Now, the next question is, where is my stop? I'll come to the stop and the exits, but very quickly, the five bar low. So just count back one, two, three, four, five, and say, okay, that immediate swing low is my stop. Okay, so whenever you trade, you want to make sure you're using a five bar low as your stop. So in other words, count back five bars, whatever's the lowest point, that's a good stop. So when I say that we're seven out of 10 times detecting the correct side of direction in the long term, it's keeping in mind that we have a five bar low as a stop. Now you can further refine it if you need to, but that's the, the basic stop that I like to move with. So focus on the first breakout, very important. The second and the third and the fourth is something I like to call add-on breakouts or secondary signals. Honestly, given a choice, I would only look for first breakouts, right? So don't push yourself to just look uh, randomly for anything which has a 3d buy or sell i need to look for 3d buys and sells but also further grade them further select them thinking and uh, looking at where do i have a first breakout opportunity i want you to really focus on that quite honestly i've stopped looking at second and third breakouts i only look at the first very rarely even the second 
right? So I think you, if you want to up your potential, up your profits, the best way to go is focus first breakout. The first time when the armor goes from negative to positive, the first time you get that buy signal. So let's look at a chart here of Singapore Airlines, and this will further help me explain to you uh, various scenarios. Now, notice this is a chart which has some chop. You have the first half of uh, Jan, Feb, March, April uh, being quite sideways, being quite choppy. But look at how we handle this. So back early October, the first week of October, Singapore Airlines breaks out from a red to a blue. We have the RMO in bullish zone. We got everything which signs up for a first breakout. We travel all the way up. That's a good run up that we see. And notice as we move down, we've come to a red bar scenario. The minute you've come to a red bar, you look up at the armor being negative. And in March, notice you mark the low of the bar. We sell below the low. See how important that rule is? You sell weakness. Wait for the confirmation. Since the low has not broken, you have not gone short. You again get a buy, doesn't fire. You again rotate into red bars, doesn't fire. So unless the sell is broken out of, unless the signal is triggered, you're really in an uptrend. So in other words, if you use the RMO setup, the October buy continued right in force all the way up to early June, okay? So that way you were participating in this whole trend as an uptrend. And then from mid-June onwards, when we broke down, we've been in a negative mode where the RMO has been negative. So you can see with what clarity this is doing it. And the reason why I've marked this as a dotted blue line is this is really an add-on buy. Why is this an add-on? Because, okay, the RMO is turning from negative to positive, but there was no sell that really fired. There was no fierce downtrend in place. These cells came, but they never triggered, they never fired, they never confirmed, they never broke the low of the signal bar. If that's not happening, you're not short. So if you're not in a downtrend, a subsequent buy is really an add-on. So the first breakout again wins the kick in October. So this is how important these simple rules are that buy above the high of the breakout bar or sell below the low of the breakout bar. And when I say breakout bar, it's the bar that has that 3D buy element. In other words, blue bar, the buy arrow should be behind it, and you have the RMO bullish. When all three are in sync, then you buy above the high. It really helps confirm and consider the timing element as well. So buy strength, sell weakness, a very age-old concept that we all need to marry in. So when you look at buying and selling notice in all the three vertical lines that I've marked, they are all 3D buys and 3D sells. These are perfect examples where you have blue bar, buy arrow, bullish. But what we need to recall is this is an add-on buy. That third blue line is an add-on. The first is somewhere here. The reason why this is add-on is because the sell signal that came here, the low was not triggered. You never went into the short side of things. Friends, there's some wonderful accuracy that you would experience and you know some great performance that you can experience with the RMO. If we start being a little meticulous about the rule that you and me as traders need to focus on the first breakout, we're not really so worked up about the add-ons. The add-ons are more there to support your a holding decision, but really the first breakout is what I want you to look for. Buy above that high, keep that five bar low stop loss because you yourself will iron out the system so beautifully if you can focus on that first breakout. You know, a lot of times uh, traders come to me and ask me, look, what's the best time frame to trade? And this is another area I'd like to caution a lot of uh, users. When you do technicals, you know, typically I have seen the amateur to the novice uh, trader looking at too many time frames. He's looking at a daily, weekly, monthly, reconfirming it, sometimes rotating back to the 60 minute. I mean, it's it's actually a bit of a comedy the way people are juggling between time frames. I'm not saying that each one of you is doing that, but in case you're in the habit of kind of looking at every different time frame, it's bound to confuse you. The daily saying something and the monthly saying something else, or the daily saying a buy and the 60 minute is not saying buy, it's still in a sell. So you have to 
you have to zero down as to what is your time frame figure that out figure out what kind of horizon you want to trade if you are someone who wants to trade for the next two three days or the next one or two weeks i am not going to necessarily force you to use only a daily chart you need to look at intervals like a 60 minute or a two hour chart or you know something lower don't look at a daily chart if your horizon is five or six days look at a daily chart if your horizon is well beyond two three weeks okay don't look at uh, a weekly chart if your horizon is a month or so because a weekly chart a month is equal to four weeks so four bars is all you're trying to forecast so let's be clear that pick a time frame of your choice which suits you which uh, is forward looking in terms of what your goal set is and don't keep shuttling between time frames i always say this mostly when users are changing time frame it's because they're no more confident on that trade or because they've started losing money when you start losing money on a daily chart you say oh you know look at the weekly the weeklies are right and i'll hold it through so that's not good that's not something which i want you to get into instead use indicators that are looking at different time levels like when you look at the rmo why am I bringing this up here? Because the RMO is looking at that short term trend, the medium term trend and long term. Let one system holistically look at all these three different angles instead of you having to juggle between three different time frames and marry them. So the RMO is doing a lovely sync of short term, medium term and long term. And if you honestly want to recognize true performance, stick with a few stocks, stick with the same rules, the same system 10 times in a row to realize seven out of 10 are correct. The problem is if we keep changing the time frame or we keep changing the stock, you're never really realizing the performance, you know. So if I kind of stay consistent, you know, how many of us would stay consistent on it? Uh, and, you know, these are real charts. That's a real chart of Singapore Airlines for almost uh, a good one year. Or oh, that's a real nifty chart in front of me for the last six odd months. And I've not tried to specifically take easy charts or easy spaces. I've tried to take all kinds of situations here and mind you most of these are uh, fully up-to-date charts now how can you make this even better i've taught you that focus on the first breakout but how do we kind of take this uh, another notch up whenever you get a first breakout buy and let's look at the circled area here blue bar buy arrow comes in and the rmo is bullish the minute you get that first breakout coming in you want to look down at the volume if you see plus minus two bars off the signal bar that you have under average volume and the average line is automatically plotted for you in the rmo template you will uh, notice that it's all under average volume how can i have a long-term trend kick starting over here or a first breakout signal kick starting without any volume without any money without any active interest and participation so it kind of helps me understand that we want to take trades when we see a confirmation of money and volume and active interest in the stock so let's Go with the flow. Let's understand the first breakout is a biggish breakout that we're looking for. It's an important breakout. But if plus minus two bars around that breakout bar, I don't find uh, above average volumes, that's going to be no good. I don't mind if it comes in two bars before, two bars after, but ballpark, I get what, I hope you get what I'm trying to come across with. For example, look at the buy that we get in August around the 35, 50, 36 dollar mark here. You got the blue bar and you got the buy arrow which comes in you got the rmo which kicks up from negative to positive so definitely a first breakout look two bars behind what do you see really good volume strong volume well above average so you can see that build up you can see that sudden punch of money behind you which is backing the breakout so uh, very important to qualitatively decide because you know detecting these trades are very easy we have scanners for you we have the power screener for you which will detect these with absolute ease but when you have three rmo 3d buys in front of you and you want to zero down which is the one you're going to go with you're going to go with the one which is the first breakout you're going to go with the one which has volume uh, backing it and that's what's really going to up the quotient because the problem is everybody wants to become over mechanical in trading and i have a big issue with that i can get you channelized i can get you rule based but i don't want you to become a black box i don't want you to become a machine i need you i need your brains but i don't need the emotion that's why i'm trying to make it rule based if i look at the buying over here i could easily save myself but if i was a machine and i said look 
hey, I've got blue bar, buy arrow and arm of bullish go, it's it. That's not gonna work. That little bit of filtering where you looked at the volume, where you check it's a first breakout, that's what really helps you take it up you know, to another level. Similarly here, you have a red bar, sell arrow. When you look plus minus two bars of the signal, you see everything's under average. How can I have a long-term down breakout with all under average volume? Volume is a very important tool or a driving force. Now, another question I get is, you know, what if I find out this lovely first breakout trade, everything's fitting in, I got the volume, and my stop loss feels a bit too large for me. So let's say I wanna buy a $35 stock, but the stop is at 32. And you know, maybe that doesn't fit my risk is to reward profile because I can't risk 10% on the equity. Now, good point. I need you to be risk calculators and be uh, someone who is uh, sensitive to that risk because it's very important we assess our stop levels in terms of what's my risk is to reward. Now, if your stop loss is large, you really have three options. Now I put up two on this slide, but just to get you into the three options, the first option which I haven't written down here is I don't want to trade if the stop loss is too large. I don't really think that's an option because you and I, if we've identified a really good signal, we don't want to miss that trade because you've done your uh, checking up and you've, you've identified a trade and you definitely want to take it. The question is, how do we take it but without being offensive in terms of risk? So choice number one, practically speaking, is do we tighten the stop loss or tweak the stop loss? Do we kind of lift our stop loss up a little bit so that uh, we take the trade just to make the risk less? Notice then you are compromising on the strike rate. If you're going to tighten your stop loss, there's every possibility you get stopped out and uh, the trade moves again in your direction. So I don't want you to do that. I don't want you to tighten the stop. I instead want you to tweak your entry approach or just your entry approach. Now, how can I adjust the entry approach? So you've got this perfect Armo 3D buy. It's a first breakout. You check the volume. You really like the setup. You want to go with it. You want to buy above the high. It's ticked it out. You buy a little bit above the high and you buy a little bit if it drops, okay? So you take the high out, you buy say 50% of your trade and you buy the balance 50% of your trade if the stock drops closer to the stop. If it doesn't and keeps going up, 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 well, you've only got 50% of the trade. So the way I'm doing it is something like this. So you've got a perfect buy over here. You got the blue bar, you wanna buy above the high and this is just a, hypothetical example, you want to buy there. Notice it goes up, but then your stop is the five bar low, one, two, three, four, five. So therefore that's my stop. If that feels too large, think of the halfway point somewhere here where I've marked the midpoint out. If the stock drops somewhere here, we will buy again. And notice she drops over there and you buy a little bit there. And look what finally happens. You buy above the high, you buy a little bit near the midpoint so that you're closer to your stop and you rotate back up, okay? Now, don't worry about the little red in case you wanted to see the arm or just went momentarily red for one or two bars. That's no good. You know why? Because A, the red bar lows are not taken out. B, the volume on that is terrible. C, your stop's not taken out. So you're pretty much on the long side of things. So bottom line, if your entry looks fairly solid and you want to take that trade, but the stop's too big, tweak the entry process by a little bit above the high, a little bit if she drops somewhere in the middle of that entry and stop level. And that way you have uh, a better trade to move ahead with. Now exits, we've talked about how do you exit if there's a stop, but as you start making some money, you want to use something called the exit swing signal to help you uh, take profit better, to help you ride the trend better. In other words, trail your stop loss. And I'll also show you a model where I use the Armo ATM trend decider levels uh, for lifting that stop. So let's start by addressing the inbuilt uh, exit swing signal that you have. And again, all of this is included as the RMO trade model template. So if you right click on your chart, apply template, select RMO trade model, you will get everything that I'm showing you, right? So you have the histogram curling down below 75. So if you curl down below that red line, you want to exit long positions below the low of the bar. 
and be careful it needs to break the low of the bar break the low so you see you're rotating down again below 75 the low is not broken the low is not broken so in other words you are keeping on lifting that stop as we progress along so it's important to keep trailing your stop as well as knowing where to exit the equity so now coming to trade identification now I'll come to looking at some of the other ATM trade models that I use but just very quickly when you buy the Armo ATM add-on you also get two very good scans the integrated buy and integrated sell in other words it integrates all the three elements that I talked to you about the blue bar the buy arrow and the Armo bullish only when all three are in sync will you get this signal so otherwise individually you have all of these scans available inside of metastock but those who have the atm add-on you do have the integrated buy and integrated sell which integrates the three elements i spoke to you about now when you buy the armo atm add-on you also get an application another application called the atm power screener now this is a great screener because automatically it's running various scans for you you know for example you could have a scan running on the stochastic on the breakout catcher on the rmo on the super filter which i'll talk to you in a bit about and these would automatically find out hey that's a stock which has a 3d buy or a 3d sell or a new blue bar and this is automatic now the advantage of the power screener is it's totally hands-free it sends you an email alert it even literally voices out the alert will actually tell you hey there's a buy on uh, hk china gas uh, on the armo 3d setup so it gives you a it literally has a human voice speaking out or other computer voice speaking out and you also have an email alert and a pop-up that can come up so very interesting ways that we have scanning now the reason why i like the power screener a lot for my scanning is i don't even have to run and explore i don't have to manually remember and go and run it besides the power screener could be running 10 different scans on scores of stocks simultaneously it all runs real time live uh, you know as well as on the end of day depending on what data feed you use if you use end of day it works with end of day if you use zenith and real-time data you get tick by tick updates of uh, new trading signals so uh, definitely a great system to be using now let's look at some more pointers which i gave you on the armo before we jump across uh, i taught you that the first breakout is what i want you to focus on we want to filter our buys and sells and when i say filter we want to make sure we buy above the high when we get a signal bar or sell below a low use a little filter be a little generous there you don't need to excessively integrate time frames because unnecessarily sometimes you're going to complicate things instead of simplifying things remember the armor is already doing a short term medium term long term integration you don't need to excessively integrate indicators because again the idea of having a system is to holistically handle things but if you have something you already enjoy using or you're successful with i don't think there's any harm if that can help you those who use fibonacci i like to use fibonacci myself particularly inside of metastock the fibonacci projection tool to give me some price targets so that's a great one to be using for confirmation understanding where support resistance lies and i also talked to you about how important it is to kind of fit in that above average volume when i get my first breakouts volumes are very important confirmation when we trade now when you get the atm rmo uh, which is part of my add-on this is a further refinement uh, on the rmo system which was released uh, uh, I think probably with version 10 was the original Armour release and the super filter is relatively new where I've built in an optimization module. What's the difference between my ATM suite of indicators versus the others? The ATM indicators are truly dynamic and optimized. And let me explain what these fancy words mean. This means that you have indicators that are not working off one fixed static value. They are running off dynamic values in other words if the indicator needs to speed up it'll speed up if the indicator needs to slow down it'll slow down let me explain this to you if i applied a 20 period moving average on all the various companies in hong kong there could be one stock that performs very well but there could be some stocks which don't really marry that 20 day moving average very well right maybe a 29 day was better on that stock so when you apply an ATM indicator, it automatically self-adjusts 
to what it believes could be the maximum potentially profitable system in terms of value. So that ironing out is done very well with the super filter. Now, what is the ATM RMO super filter? Let's understand it. Very simple. We are marking four colors on the bars. Remember earlier they were just red and blue bars in the inbuilt RMO, but now I have marked it simply as dark blue, light blue, and orange and red. So the orange is bearish, the red is further bearish. Similarly, light blue is bullish, and dark blue is another a higher sense of bullish trends. So when the dark blue is rotating into light blue, you also get a bit of a pulse as to how the strength is shifting in terms of quality. You have a dark blue trend which is fiercely moving up and you move to a light blue. You understand that it's kind of having a little bit of rotation, but then you also understand light blue continues to be bullish. Now, where does it save me? A lot of times when the armor goes up and down very quickly or has a little bit of chop, Notice over here, and again, this is a HSBC, and you can see there's a solid one year plus, probably one and a half years of data that I have up on my screen for you. Um, one of those top stocks uh, you have in Hong Kong. You have a lot of times where it's gone buy, sell, buy, sell on the Armo. If you look down at that strip, you can see little bits of green and red. But the best part is the ATM Armo super filter has colored these bars orange, which means don't go ahead and take those buys because the orange is telling you that don't run into a trading signal on that buy side. And so the super filter kind of, you know, supersedes the armor itself. It's kind of a leader when it has to be and a lagger when it has to be. So many times people come and tell me, hey, but that means that basically the super filter or the ATM armor is a slower version. In other words, that's why it's having the smoothening effect. No, it's not a slower version. Let's be clear. It's an optimized version, which means there are times it needs to be faster and it will be faster. And there are times where it needs to slow down the indicator and then increase the performance. So you can see in this in 2018, when we had this big drop in HSBC, uh, in the months of April, May, June, when you had the little Philip up and the sideways price action, it continued to tell you that stay bearish, stay orange. Even back in end July, when you had that little green patch on the RMO, it stayed orange for you, blocking you out from getting into the buys and instead helped you stay focused on the sell side of things. So you were continuously trading the short side 2018 in HSBC and that, that way it keeps you really well into the trend. So the idea is to bifurcate for you uh, where is bullish and where is bearish. So all of this, again, this is another great example. Look down at the December 2015, 2016 area. You've got that whole red, green, red, green, you know, a lot of the RMO going up and down, up and down. You have seen with clarity over here, there's a dark blue and it stayed blue all the way. It doesn't matter. It can move into dark blue and light blues, but essentially dark blue and light blue means you've been bullish all the way. So it helps you stay solid in terms of that bullish trend and you are staying locked in into that up move. And likewise, you have the dark red that comes in and it helps you stay bearish. Now, here's another example where you can see the red bars come in much before the RMO even turn negative. So you can look over here, the red bars come in a good 20 bars before that RMO turn negative. So notice the indicator has sped up or increased its, uh, its uh, you know, sensitivity to that equity stock uh, so that you can get the signals faster in. So that optimization is an amazing feature. And mind you, once it stamps a red bar or a red arrow or any kind of signal, it does not ever change in the future, right? So I know there are programs out there who use the name optimized and adaptive, but unfortunately, when you use the indicator, you know, when you go back three months and then you say, oh, you know, that signal has got erased. This does not erase any signals. Once it stamps a signal, it's there to stay. It does not change. So you can always rely on it. So you can, again, just to recap, understand that the dark blue comes in. That's an early signal that the trend is changing despite the RMO being in negative. So use that as an early signal. Get out of your shorts. Think where to buy. So it smoothens out the RMO itself. So where it goes from bearish to bullish here. Notice I stayed light blue. So you can see right on this very chart, you were faster over here because you got the dark blue when the RMO was negative. 
and you were slow over here. You got the red bar maybe 10 days after the Armour went negative. Because really what you're seeing in the bar colors is an optimized RMO, is a tailor-made RMO, is, a, is an RMO designed for that equity. So, uh, you know, that's the beauty. That's where the performance kicks in. So it's quite fascinating that you have uh, this whole machinery built in for you uh, with the new ATM RMO template. So you're making that very solid RMO signal even better and even more meaningful in terms of trading decision. I mean, this is a chart of State Bank of India. And again, I, I've not taken very easy charts here. These are choppy charts. You look at the last 20, 30 bars, this is an hourly chart, and you can see the kind of chop that's happening on the equity. But see how solid I'm being? Despite the armor wobbling from bearish to bullish, I have stayed long all the way from the 27th of August all the way. So the last 100 bars, I've basically been on the long side of things. I haven't been shorting this because even though the armor went negative, this was light blue. I instead use this as an opportunity maybe to re-enter, get in and stay solid on the trade. So even when I became orange here and the armor went negative, both of them were in sync. The lows are not broken. Okay, so unless these lows break at 305, 306, I'm not going to sell short on the stock. So that's how beautiful it is. That's how easy it helps me. This is China Mobile. And when you look at China Mobile here again, you had the odd hiccups where the armor went bullish and bearish and bullish back in May, but it stayed orange. It helps you stay focused and unidirectional. Now, presently in the last two weeks, it's been going up and you can see the minute you saw that dark blue, that's a solid signal coupled with that armor bullish. That's the first breakout, right? So there's so much of a better feel that you start developing. And for those of you who are new to it, we've got commentary which automatically interprets the various elements of the ATM add-on, like for example, the breakout catcher, the trend decider, the SWI, right? So the ATM RMO, remember when you buy the suite of the ATM, you've got scores of indicators that come your way, 30 different scanners that you have access to, but primarily you've got six to seven core strategies. And these strategies are, are all optimized and integrated strategies, which you can use individually on their own. Now, another very favorite uh, setup of mine, which I use every day along with the ATM RMO, is the trend decider. I mean, this is my go-to indicator, whether it's for trailing stops, whether it's for confirming my entries or getting that first-hand feel of the market. So let's start with the trend decider daily, weekly, and monthly. Why have I given these names? The trend decider daily looks a bit like this. It marks a green line across the price chart. And this is a level that gets updated every day. That's why it's called the trend decider daily. So if it's updating every day, in other words, I have a new level every day. And this is the uh, 10 minute chart of the uh, Singapore Exchange uh, Index, the STI. And you can see if I'm below that level for the day, I'm bearish. If I'm above the green line for the day, I'm bullish above the green line bullish I break the green line I'm bearish for the day so an excellent indicator for those who are short term or day trading you get the trend decider daily level which gives you the key level for the day if I'm trading above that level buy if I'm trading below that level and you know you expect a bearish move but my real favorite is this weekly one I love using the trend decider weekly because my profile is more kind of not just limited to one day I like to look at you know for a couple of days I like to hang into those trades because that's when you get a bigger trend this is the uh, Hang Seng index and you can see how you know we've got a couple of weeks here we've got a good uh, one month plus of data and you can see I'm above the red line bullish break the red line bearish above the red line bullish again break the red line, bearish. So beautiful confirmation that you get uh, in terms of key levels of support and also understanding. But the fun of things comes in when you sink it in. When you add both the uh, trend decider daily and the trend decider weekly uh, on one single chart. So I took the uh, uh, setup and this is a pre-built template that I have for you. It is Every Monday morning, you get a new trend decider weekly level, and every single day, you get a new trend decider daily level. The trend decider daily is represented in green color on this chart, and the trend decider weekly is on the red color. This is a chart of HSBC, and we're looking at two hour bars here. 
And uh, as you can see, I've marked various points. What am I looking for on this bar? Have I closed below the daily and the weekly level? Yes. If the green has slipped below the red, in other words, the trend is either daily has come below the weekly and price is trading below both the levels, that shows excessive weakness. And that's where you get a sell. And notice, even at the bottom, it's automatically marked for you with a red strip. So that becomes a big sell opportunity for you. Notice over here, despite the price going above the daily and the weekly level, it's not a buy, it's not green. The reason being that the green line stayed below the red line. If you look carefully, the green line went above the red line a little later, but that was no good because the price slipped below it. We need, simply speaking, when you buy, you want to make sure the price is trading above the trend decider daily, above the trend decider weekly, and the fact that the green is above the red. You need all three things, okay? So this is no good. You may, the green may be above the red. In other words, the trend decider daily is higher than the trend decider weekly, but the price is not above both levels, all right? So the trend decider, again, an amazing tool to get that rhythm. In fact, just probably on the 27th or 28th, we had that set up. The green went above the red on HSBC. You want to buy above the high, doesn't trigger. So you're still not triggered on the buy side. So basically, from August 1st, you've been continuing selling short uh, HSBC. And it's beautiful. You're basically concentrating directionally short. So it's a wonderful structural way of understanding. It's probably the quickest way you can, you can decipher the trend. And one of my most favorite methods to use when I trade. I mean, this, for example, is the Nifty. The Nifty was bearish earlier on where the green was below the red, but notice mid-July or early July, rather around the 4th or 5th, when the green trend decided daily went above the weekly, it's just been all the way bullish. And you had the odd area where the green dropped below the red, but notice no good because the low of that bar is not broken. So in essence, we've been continuously in positive vibration. And it's a great way you can see, even if you look at the red steps, the weekly step, it's a positive step. The fleet of stairs is going up till I take that step down. The trend's not changing. So the weekly level is, again, a very fascinating tool to be using. And for those of you who are new to this, uh, again, go to the expert advisor commentary. It automatically interprets it. Use that x-axis ribbon. It interprets it for you. And friends, for those of you who already have the ATM or plan to get the ATM, today you want to make sure you go through the master class sessions i do a pro class where you would have access to that pro class only if you have subscribed to that program uh, you would get that under the my downloads so you'd also get access to a manual that i've written and the pro class to give you more practical fields because remember the atm is not just the atm rm on the trend side as i told you there's several there's scores of indicators at play uh, there's six or seven core strategies that you can be using so uh, there's a depth the idea is today to give you a flavor and feel of some of the more important ones some of the most relevant ones that i personally recommend you use so you can use this tactically in many ways you know for example a lot of traders say hey if i have the exit swing rotating into a bullish mode and it's trading above the trend decider weekly i want to buy so that's another nice way to use it or if you look at the trend decider uh, weekly breaking and you see it rotating down below 75 that's the exit swing you can expect a small drop so if you're chasing the short term now these are not very good short signals but at least you can you know get a quick in and out three or four bars because the rmo is bullish and if you're selling when the rmo is bullish you're really doing it short term so that you can pick it up lower down again so you can use this very well every time the exit swing rotates down from the 75 and you break a weekly level that's another interesting setup you could be playing with some of the users like to look at when daily and weekly both puncture and the esi i mean there's no end to the level of confirmation and level of uh, accuracy you can build into this so definitely something i recommend you look at now let's come into the the last tool that i want to discuss is the swi uh, the strength weakness index is a tool that i designed straight around volume it only works on symbols which have volume data. So I'd like to caution you, if you're using it, let's say on an index, and that index is not something that trades and is just the barometer, the SWI would not work. You need to have volume data on the chart that you're looking at. Only then would the uh, SWI indicator really work. So 
Coming to this, the strength weakness index marks a straight line across the chart, a red line. And all it does is it calculates the flow of volume. So if price is trading below that line, you know the volume flow is negative. If price is trading above that line, the volume flow is positive. Now, when I say the flow of volume, let's understand this statement a little better. Volume increasing with the price is a positive signal. So basically price goes up, volume goes up, that's a positive signal. And maybe that's happening which is why the bar colors are blue, which is why the bars are trading above the SWI line. But there's going to be a point where, say, the price is increasing, but the volume stopped increasing. It's no more increasing. And then you start shifting the trend. Maybe when the price is going down, the volume is increasing. That's a further bearish signal. So that classic concept that an uptrend or a downtrend accompanied with volume is more powerful is married into that SWI. If the price is going up and is not accompanied with volume, that also creates a disbalance and changes the trend. So that whole balance of volume is what I've married into the SWI so beautifully because it, I need an indicator which just exclusively looks at volume. The SWI doesn't even understand price data. All it knows is volume. Is the price ticking up with volume or is the price ticking up without volume? Is the trend of volume increasing or is the trend of volume decreasing? The SWI is really focusing on that aspect. It doesn't use price data, okay? Which is why when you apply it on an index, as I said, which does not have volume data, it would probably not work. So that's again a chart of Tata Motors uh, and one of the big Indian stocks, the big automobile companies. You can see over here, the SWI has been negative primarily all of 2018. So, you know, the minute the price got into red bars, it's been negative. There's been the odd blue bar, but high of the blue bars not taken out. High of the blue bars not taken out. If the highs are not taken out, you're still really negative. It's only uh, very recently that you see the balance of volume starting to make some kind of a shift there. So again, you also understand that the stop is okay. If I start breaking that SWI line and I become a red bar, I want to get out of that trade. Otherwise, the, the most recent switch is that we moved from a negative volume flow to a positive so that this balance is occurring right so this is something which exclusively looks at volume and i like to look at the swi more as a confirmatory tool to my other systems because you need something which looks at volume alone you know a lot of the under, other indicators are very heavily price focused and trend focused but to get this segregated volume view could be quite fascinating and again here too we have an expert which tells you that the SWI is suggesting a bullish pulse and what is the RMO as well at that time and if you see that agreement you understand you want to keep trading that on the buy side or the sell side friends when you look at the power screen app again i'm rotating back to this uh, to kind of help you understand that everything that i teach you is programmed into live scanners in fact just look at this i could in put in a scan for the trend decider a scan for the breakout catcher the zone detector two very popular indicators in the atm as well which i'm not discussing today we also have the rmo2 which is very helpful if you trade options and if you trade options just to give you a heads up next week i'm doing an a webinar where I'm going to talk about how to use the Armo systems with options as well. So uh, make sure you register for that event. And you can even enter your positions. So you can say how much have you traded and it would calculate your mark to mark profit and loss. And remember there are 30 different indicators and all this, you know, say you're a candlestick guy, you want any candlestick pattern to flash up or you like the RSI or MACD or stochastics or, uh, you know, all my ATM stuff, everything's built into these live scanners. It's really my go-to screen. I get to know what the price of that stock is live. I get to know if there's a new buy or sell signal which is featuring right now. I get automatically, you know, email updates or alerts that pop up for me. So it's it's definitely something which helps me big time in terms of finding the opportunity. And you know, the best part of the scanners, you know, a lot of people ask me look but we've got an explorer to scan but let me tell you you have to still take the initiative to run that scan you have to run 10 different scans often if you're following 10 different indicators and then manually shift through the results but here you open the application and boom it just fires all the different signals onto you and again you can customize it you may say look i only want it on these 20 stocks so i want it on these 100 stocks and 
you may choose the time frame it's not that they only work off daily charts you may say look i'm a 10 minute chart trader or i like to look at the two hour chart you can have the indicators work off a daily or a weekly or whatever time frame you're trading so the level of customization is huge i mean i personally use this as my everyday screen and trust me the feedback we've got is absolutely amazing it's been fascinating you never miss a trade you never run into that situation where someone's saying oh you know i got a signal but i forgot to run the scan on that day i was not in front of my screen i didn't look at the monitor at that time well if you didn't look at it you have a voice alert which is voicing it out you have the email alert that's coming so really there's no scope of a miss of opportunity and you know the only thing which you can do is now refine and concentrate as to where you want to take more of a trade or where you want to take less of a trade so there's a lot of focus that we've put into building but, but if you're someone who likes using explorers let me again remind you if you're used to using the explorers which are again very powerful all the atm studies do have explorations built in there's a counter trend study and rmo2 study which i didn't cover today the breakout catcher study which i didn't cover every single study and strategy has explorations has power screener fields and let me remind you that if you buy the atm you get all the templates all the indicators and the power screener application all included within it including the integrated buy and sell setups for your classic rmo right so uh, that gives you a bit of an overhang as to what we were trying to achieve today uh, i'm probably going to throw it open for questions right now but before i end i'd like to remind you that there are definitely those of you on the atm i want to get onto the atm uh, jeff can help you uh, uh, know out what the offers are and the sign up processes but in terms of resources get into your my downloads you have a lovely manual out there you have access to three different classes including the pro class the users only class and of course we're there to further back you up so over to you jeff i'm going to now throw it over to uh questions all right thank you uh rahul we did have a couple of questions that came in and if you have some questions feel free to ask uh now is a great time i think i answered most of them though uh tian asked uh, when you're covering like the original rmo how do you realize that time you can buy when the market is down? Uh, I'm sorry, I, I kind of lost you midway. Okay. Uh, Tian asked, uh, uh, or he asked, uh, actually exactly what he asked was how, you were actually talking a little bit about the RMO, and he says, how do you realize the time to enter when the market is down, or the time to buy when the RMO is down, or when the so market the is down? Okay, thanks, Jeff. So uh, yeah. again, the RMO is basically a trend following indicator, which means it's not an indicator I use to get market tops and bottoms. And uh, let me again remind you that we need to make sure that we're using counter trend indicators, which I haven't covered today, but we do have an indicator in the ATM called the counter trend indicator. Uh, or you can also use the SWI that can give you a further confirmation into a counter trend signal but just the pure classic rmo is not a top picker or bottom picker it's more a trend follower so it would come in when it's on a more confirmed basis but again that doesn't mean that you cannot use the rmo a lot of people have a fascination to catch a top and a bottom but i kind of put it this way nobody's giving you a a medal to catch that peak or the bottom uh, you can probably do a lot better by getting more accuracy it doesn't matter where you buy it it matters where you buy it and where you sell it in other words do you have a profitable trade or you don't have a profit it doesn't matter if i bought it at 12 and sold it at 13 or whether i bought it at 10 and sold it at 11 there's a very minuscule difference in that so uh, chase accuracy chase hit rate and that's what the armo is there to deliver but again if you're looking at um, top and bottom picking my go-to tools would be the atm counter trend indicator my go-to tool would also be looking at that exit swing signal rotation with the trend aside a weekly level that I showed you briefly today. So look at those two. That can uh, sufficiently help you. Uh, one more question that we have from, uh, this is from Rohit TV. He wants to know if the super filter in Metastock is the same as the uh, tick oscillator in eSignal. No, they're very different. The super filter is designed around the RMO, so it's a, uh, it's uh, inside of uh, Metastock, so you have to be, if you're going to use the Armo and the super filter, you need to be on Metastock only. Okay. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the offer. If you, again, if you have questions, uh, 
please go ahead and let us know. Uh, but I want to talk a little bit about the uh, special webinar offer that we have today. I want to start by saying uh, uh, the RMO ATM right now is the most successful subscription-based add-on we've released for Metastock. So customers that get it love it. Uh, personally, I, I love to play with the uh, with the uh, power screener and uh, track my profit and losses in it and get all the real-time alerts and the voice alerts and the text alerts. It does actually include um, uh, these six systems. So we talked about breakout catcher, counter trend indicator, the RMO2, um, and um, basically, normally, if you were to go ahead and lease this thing, what you would normally do, uh, if you just bought it from our website, it's going to cost $129 a month uh, uh, for uh, forever, basically. Uh, one of the things that, that Rahul has agreed to do today at the event is if you subscribe to it, uh, not only will you, we give you a permanent $30 discount on the RMO ATM. In other words, you'll pay RMO, you'll pay $99 a month for it uh, for the length of your subscription. We're also going to give you a second month for free. So you can pay $99, you'll get a second month for free. Uh, you can also do a yearly subscription. Uh, if you do the yearly subscription, you'll basically pay $1,069. Uh, the retail on that is normally $1,150, but at the higher rate, again, we're giving a fairly significant discount on it. I believe it's about $1,356, but don't take that as word. I, I should have checked the website first. Um, the other thing that Rahul will do is if you do buy the annual package, he's going to give, um, a, a, well, one of the staff at Viratic, one of his specialists, is actually going to do one-on-one -on -one training to help you get up to speed with everything. I almost said that he was going to give the training. I've said that before, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's not actually true. It'll be one of his uh, specialists that's actually trained on it. Um, well, Jeff's going to do it for you. <laughs> um, I think you'd rather have the specialist. But uh, in any case, to take advantage of that, what you want to do is uh, give us a, you can give us a call at uh, country code 1-801-506-0900. Or uh, I know a lot of you are from Singapore or Hong Kong or um, uh, in that general vicinity. The easiest way to get a hold of us now is to just chat online with us. And you can do that by going to metastock.com slash sales chat. So I'd encourage you to try it. Uh, Everybody I talk to that uses it really, really likes it. Uh, so $99 per month uh, instead of $129, and that'll actually also get you set up for two months, which is going to give you enough time to really kind of dive into the tools uh, and understand uh, whether or not they're going to make an impact on your trading. Uh, I think uh, Rahul would agree if it helps you make better trading decisions, it's probably worth about 100 bucks a month. So uh, in any case, the risk reward is pretty good. Uh, I don't see any more questions coming in, Rahul. Uh, did you have any final thoughts for us? Well, that's great. I appreciate uh, all of you joining in today. I thank you for being here. Again, uh, thanks to Metastock for organizing this. I appreciate the uh, importance they give to learning and educating users more than just selling things. It's very important in our learning curve and training results. So thank you, friends. And if you do have questions, feel free to email us directly at Viratech. Just in case you want to contact information, it's viratechindia.com. That's our website. Uh, you can hit the contact us page in case you want to speak to one of us or have any questions further. Uh, thank you, friends, and thanks, Jeff. Okay. Thank you, Rahul. Uh, and thanks, everybody. Uh, we'll see you at the next event. Thank you. <laughs>